Raise your hands everywhere and let's worship the King of Kings. You're the Lamb upon the throne. Wave your hands to Him. Open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and exalt His great name. This is a very important part of the service. Forget about what is around you. This is not the time to look around. This is the time to focus the eyes of your heart on the King of Kings. Worship Him in the beauty of holiness. The Bible says, give Him praise. Just magnify His name. In your own words, bless Him. In your own words, adore Him. Call His name to Him. The Lamb upon the throne. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of all glory, honor, wisdom, might, dominion and power. Give him praise. Bless him in the spirit if you can. Please make sure you participate. This is the part of the service where you really touch God. Open your mouth and bless him. Call his name. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your understanding. Talk to Jesus this afternoon. Bless him. Bless him. Raise your voice to him. Habarako siva hate melete be shopra hata mande. Membre hete be kosopra hata mande kasia bata. Fele prosi prahata mande si. Li baharoko se membe reko subahadai. Would you adore him? Would you magnify him? Hola ma shama rade hebo si abaha de boro sinime. Zobroko tebelekide amasada. I bless you, Jesus. I exalt you. I extol you. I lift up your holy name. Out of my belly will proceed thanksgiving. Come on, 20 more seconds, bless him. Subrahana make baroga hope siatayo. Salabarahate boko rubedia sodomai. Generations after generations keep praising you. Yet no one sums it up. Then I asked the Lord, What name fits you? And he says, Yeah. Generations after generations, he praised in you. Yet no art sums you up. Say, then I ask the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, yeah. Let's do it one more time. Say, generations, generations, after generations, he praises you. Yet no what sums you Can I ask the Lord What name He says yeah And he says yeah Now let's open our, our mouth and testify Say yeah the heart of God Yeah the
Then I ask the Lord what name. And he says, Yeah. Let's sing it to him one more time. Then I ask the Lord. What name fits you? Delizia. Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. We thank you for your presence that is in this place. We declare that Jesus will be glorified. We thank you for the atmosphere of your spirit. We thank you for miracles signs and wonders and mighty things that you will do tonight we bring every soul and every spirit in this environment under the lordship of jesus we bring everything living and non-living things in this environment under the lordship of jesus and let your name be glorified make a show with your power that your people will know that you are alive and let no one leave this place the same. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Before we sit, can I ask you to pray for one minute? Important it is that we pray in meetings like this. Because number one, it builds faith that is already in your spirit. To expect what God will do in your life. Number two, it places a demand on the power and the grace of God that is available. Because just because God's power is available doesn't mean anything will happen. One time in Luke's gospel, the Bible says Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. And the Pharisees and the doctors of the laws were there. And the power of God was present to heal. That's how he puts it. But the whole of that service, there was not one healing that took place. So, if the power of God is present for you to make it work, one of the ways is through prayer. When you pray, you place a demand on what is available. You place a demand on what the grace of God has made available so that you can become a first recipient. The Bible says the husband man, the husband man is the farmer, is the one that labors to see the crop grows. So, you're laboring in prayer, you're laboring by coming for this meeting and in worship and in everything that you are asked to do participating with the service the bible says as a husband man you will be the first partaker of the vine thereof and i tell you the truth god will move in such a mighty way in this place Amen. you will go back with too many testimonies Amen. in the name of jesus christ i want you for three minutes to cry to the god of heaven who is your god and my god and ask him to visit you this evening lift your voice everywhere online on ground make sure you are praying come on raise your voice and pray raise your voice and talk to him raise your voice and talk to him the bible says in mark 11 24 what things soever you desire it says when you pray when you pray believe that you receive it and then you will have when you pray when you pray when you pray come on raise your voice ask him for an encounter ask him for a mighty visitation lord if your power is in this place i want to partake of it i want to experience you that is why i came I didn't come to look around me or to look at my neighbor. I refuse to be distracted tonight. This is my night. And let the power and the grace of God that is available here answer to every need that, is, that exists in my life. Someone is praying. Raise your voice in desperation. The Bible says the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous are fail at much i feel it much the amplifier says it is dynamic in its working somebody's praying call upon the god of heaven and earth call upon the god of israel the god of abraham isaac and jacob the god of the everlasting covenant 
the God that is alive and alive forevermore. Call upon the God of heaven and earth. Raise your voice. Come on. Visit me tonight, O God. I need an encounter. I need a healing. Somebody's crying to him. I need a breakthrough in my finances. I want an end to come to this reproach, this cycle of failure around my life. Let something happen in my life as a sign and as a token that my God is alive. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Somebody scream. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. For thine is the king, for thine is the king, the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine, for thine is the kingdom, the power forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Say, amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen.
says lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up the everlasting laws and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory says the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates the gates of your foundations be lifted the gates of your obstacles be lifted the gates of your crisis situation be lifted the gates against your destiny be lifted you say amen 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 Hallelujah. I sense the spirit of prayer in this place. We are going to pray some more. I want you to agree with the neighbor. Just hold the hands of somebody. Two, two. One time Paul spoke to one of the churches he wrote to. And he said, brethren, pray for us. I want you to agree with your neighbor. You are going to pray for your neighbor. That God will location a visitation in his or her life this evening. Your neighbor may have been praying before this service, but I want you to join faith with them. The Bible says if one chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. Can you join faith with your neighbor? Raise your voice and say, Father, visit this dearly beloved of mine. If you are anointing someone, anoint my brother, anoint my sister. If you are changing lives tonight, don't pass him or him or her by. Can you raise your voice as we pray in agreement? The Bible says, Whatever two of you shall agree at touching on earth, whatever two of you shall agree at touching, whatever two of you shall agree at touching, whatever two of you shall agree at touching, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. Come on, somebody raise your voice. This is why you came tonight. You are the lion of Judah, the lamb upon the throne. We you are the lion of Judah, the lamb upon the throne. We hail you, we worship you. We hail you, Mosa. We hail you. We worship you. We hail you, Mosa. Elohim Madonna. Madonna, Shabbat Shalom, 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 Shabbat
It's a when the day of Pentecost was come. They were all in one accord in one place. Come on, agree with your neighbor tonight. Elohim 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 I hear the lion. I hear the lion. I hear the lion. I hear the lion. I hear the I worship the lion. 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 I But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, an innumerable company of angels. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we welcome you in this place. Touch somebody tonight. Visit someone tonight. In Jesus. Jesus. Lord, thank you for that life, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that you will visit tonight. Thank you for the activity of angels in this place. Thank you for a heavy weight of your power and your glory that is amongst us tonight. Lord, we pray that you walk signs and wonders. We pray that you manifest yourself. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah.
I want to welcome you to July's miracle service. <laughs> Hallelujah. And listen to me before you sit down. I assure you, under God, I assure you that you will not leave this place the same. A dear man of God I respect so much usually will pray a prayer for a meeting. And the prayer he prays is that, oh God, those who want to come and see, let them come and see. So in case you came here tonight and you just came to see, let's see the latest thing now or let's see what's going to happen. May God surprise you in the name of Jesus. But it is my desire that if God called for a miracle service, it is because he is sufficient in himself to visit every one of us. So that everybody will live with a testimony that is relative to your life and to your Christian experience. And God will glorify his name today. i like your heart to be open tonight. It's not about me. It's not about me. Truly, there is no great man of God anywhere. We are all men of a great God. We are all men helped by God. I'm just going to be the conduit tonight, the passage and the vessel that God is going to use to reach out to you. So whether you are in this hall or you are following online, I want you to open up your heart and let your faith be alive. That story can still change. That delay can come to an end. And if you believe it, tonight will be that night. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of God. Do you know this song? Bless, blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Eternity is holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Your word sings of the evening. You are God, you are Adonai, Lord of our all. Strong ranger Jehovah's your name. Just listen. You are God, you are Adonai, Lord over all. Sovereign Jehovah's your name. Same progression. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. You are God, you are Adonai, Lord over all, sovereign Jehovah's your name. You are God, you are Adonai, Lord over all. Sovereign Jehovah, Sovereign Jehovah's young, Sovereign Jehovah, Sovereign Jehovah's young name, Sovereign Jehovah's young name, Sovereign Jehovah's young name, Sovereign Jehovah's young name, Sovereign Jehovah's young name. Sovereign Jehovah's your 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 name. S
Jehovah's your name. For some of you, why you came tonight is just to soak in this atmosphere. Your soul just needed an atmosphere like this where you can be seated and just soak in the glory. For some of you, the visitation tonight is that God is healing your soul. God is doing all kinds of things in our midst, even whilst under this atmosphere. Can you pray in the spirit if you can for just 60 seconds? There's such a strong atmosphere of the presence of God. Spirit for a minute. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. The Bible says that they look to him and their faces were enlightened. Our hope is Yahweh. They look to him and they were not ashamed. We look to Yahweh. None who trust in God shall be put to shame. They looked to Him and their faces were enlightened. We look to To the Lamb upon the throne, we raise a sound. We raise a sound. My God, for He is God and God alone. Say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We say Hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, 
Shout, testify with me. Hallelujah. My God, the Spirit of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, raise that sound to Him. Raise that language of the heavens to Him. Hallelujah. Sing Hosanna. Your situation and circumstance. Let your king believe that I oh, so let our king believe that I. for your presence be lifted high in this place be lifted high in our lives above situations and circumstances above our worries above our fears be lifted high oh be lifted Above all order. We are not wasting time. This is part of the miracle service. The atmosphere of the glory of God is being stirred up in this place as you worship. Oh, believe there. Above all order. Softly. Oh glorious God, oh glorious God, we pray we lay we worship you tonight. Oh glorious God, say oh. The Lord is saying something. Listen, 
I'm hearing in my spirit, God is saying, He said, and I will restore again laughter and happiness to that family. I'm hearing it clear in my spirit. God is saying to a family here, and I will restore again laughter and happiness. Job said, for he will fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with joy. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with what? Laughter and our lips with joy. I'm prophesying it again to anybody that will believe. God is restoring laughter and happiness again. I don't care the situation that you have been in. I don't care where your family is right now. But God is restoring again in this second half of the year. Laughter and happiness. You will have every reason to laugh again. You will have every cause to laugh again. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says joy and rejoicing shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. If there is joy and rejoicing, it is because something has happened or something is happening. God is bringing somebody here. I tell you the truth, this service is implicating the remaining part of this year. That for every month there will be something, there will be an activity of the goodness and the grace of God at work in your family. There will always be a reason to laugh, to dance, to celebrate. Till your joy overwhelms your environment. I will restore again. It's a word for a family. I will restore again. That means there are things that have gone wrong in recent times. That means there are situations and chaos. But I will restore again. Our God is a restorer. That is the reason why nothing is missing. Nothing gets lost in the kingdom. Because there's restoration. Whatever left you can come back to you. Whatever was stolen from you can be returned. Please be seated. Hebrews chapter 10. It looks like I'm preaching two sermons today. But I want to say this briefly to encourage somebody God gave me this word specifically for somebody Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 down to 37 when you come for miracle services like this your faith can also be restored you believe as it is written in scripture it is possible that your faith can fail And if the faith of a man fails, remember in Luke chapter 18, in verse 6, he says, If the Son of Man returns again, will he still find faith? Anything can fail, not your faith. But in case your faith has failed in recent times because you seem to be overwhelmed, for some of you, maybe you've been waiting on the promise of God and it seems to tarry too long. It seems like God is not going to arrive on your timing. You are here in this service for God to revive and restore your faith so that you can have the reason to hope and to believe again. He says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward. Go on. For you have need of endurance. In other words, side by side with your faith, you need a co-laborer that is called endurance which is also called patience. Someone once said that patience is a stabilizer of faith. You know what a stabilizer does to a current. He said, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. He said, for he that will come, next verse, he yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. So in case you've been here and you've been waiting on God for a particular thing, waiting on God to enter into another season, waiting on God to live where you are to where he wants you to be, and you probably have waited long, believing again and again that God will do what he has said. But it seems to tarry. This message is for you. He says you have need of patience. You have need of endurance. After that you have done the will of God. And when I was reading this scripture, I asked myself, what is the will of God truly? Because the Bible says that when your patience keeps you through a season of process. And in that season, 
it is expected that there is a will of God you will accomplish. He said, and after that you have done the will of God, then you will receive the promise. So see, process, every season of process or wilderness experience that you go through, there is a will of God that must be accomplished. You don't just jump out of that season to the next one because you are tired of suffering or because you are, you are tired of the things happening around you and you desperately need a change. The Bible says there is yet a will of God that must be accomplished. And I can tell you the truth. The will of God there is simply that you keep holding on till he shows up for you. After that you have done the will of God, you keep waiting on him. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew. So when it finally comes true for you, the first thing he does is he renews your strength. He revives your faith. Because your faith is the connection, the contact point between you and the I am. Everything that he will do in your life is on the strength of your faith. But then in verse 37 he says, For yet a little while, just in case you have been waiting on him how long will this predicament continue oh lord how long will i go through this cycle of shame for some of you in fact why one of the reasons why you came is because there are cycles that need to be broken in your life it seems as though you, you, you it feels like you'll make progress and then you come right back to the same spot that's a cycle and perhaps you have been crying before god when will this come to an end when would my story change? When will I have the opportunity to testify like others? Have I not served you enough, O oh God? Have I not prayed enough? Have I not fasted enough? I have sown seeds and made sacrifices, serving in the house of God. I have done everything that I should do. And I have said it before, that if you have done everything you know to do and nothing seems to change, there is just one more thing you need to do. Wait. Waiting is the most honorable and the highest honor. Sorry. Waiting is the highest honor that God can give to any man. The Bible says in Isaiah 64 verse 4 that he acts for those who wait for him. He says, for yet a little while and he that shall come will come. I'm prophesying it to someone who has been waiting on God for a miracle perhaps. Maybe you're not trusting God for many things. Maybe it's just one thing you are believing God for. You've kept confessing the word, sleepless nights, praying all through the night, warring your, your prophecies to come into manifestation, doing everything possible. Some of you consistently confessing the word of God over your life, refusing to give up and give in to the situations around you. The word of God for you today is that he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Go back to that scripture again. He said, for yet a little while and he that will come will come. He that will come will come. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Don't get so overwhelmed by the situations around you. Don't get so sucked up in your need. And forget that the reason why you came for this service is because your season of tiring has come to an end. You know the story of the, the ten virgins. Five were wise according to scripture and five were foolish. The Bible says they waited all day for the bridegroom. And at midnight, while they were sleeping, the Bible says the bridegroom showed up. They had probably given up waiting, so they slept off. Maybe he will come another day, not today. This is already midnight. The Bible says at midnight. Sometimes, when you have waited long for God to come true for you, be careful not to miss your season of visitation. Because most times, weariness gets a hold of us when that when it is now the season for God to manifest. Most of the times. Here you are seated before me, not knowing that in the next 24 hours, God is about to do something in your life that will change and turn around your situation. 
some of you are just hours away from a miracle job that will blow your mind and blow the mind of everybody around you i'm telling you some of you are just minutes hours away from strange kinds of manifestations how do i know because it doesn't even look like anything will happen now that's when god comes through say why they were sleeping that was when the bridegroom came and thank god that the wise virgins had oil they had staying power so it doesn't matter whatever it is i want your heart to be open tonight i believe that this was the service that god designed to be your stepping into a kairos season the bible says seed time and harvest some of you have sown in prayers some of you in sacrifices some of you consecrating yourself to god one way or another you have kept the seed time this is your harvest time and god will visit you tonight he said for he that will come will come and shall not tarry you know it reminds me of the scripture i think it's habakkuk chapter 2 where it says that the vision is for an appointed time he said though it tarry wait for it then he says it shall not tarry how can you say in the same sentence though it tarries and then he says it shall not tarry the bible says that we are closer to our day of salvation than when we first believe you are this close to the hand of God moving in your life. You are this close to God making a statement. That's why you came here this night. For some of you that an anointing will rest upon your life. And in the next 60 days, in the days ahead, God is going to write his signature upon your life by his acts. You know, there are certain things that can happen in the life of a man. Nobody will argue that this one is God. There are miracles you can argue. There are miracles you can't argue. While I was seated there, I was talking to Bishop. I, I, I said, oh boy, I was just thinking today oh, about our lives. I said, truly, we are a mystery. Not also. I mean, just me and him. I can add you now. The reason was because as I began to give God thanks today, while preparing for this meeting, I took out about an hour thanking God. I realized that in all the miracle service we have seen strange kinds of manifestations all of a sudden the pictures of the people that god had healed families restored miracle jobs here and there all kinds of things that god had done in our midst even to people who followed or connected online they began to flash before me and i had every reason to believe that if he did it yesterday he would do it again today that's why thanksgiving is important remember that's the reason why the Bible says enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It is good before you start the prayers or anything. Make sure you start with thanksgiving. It is the strategy to ward off complaint and murmuring. All of a sudden your eyes open up to see what God has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord now think about all that he has done for you think about all that you have received from him think about how he has spared your life how can you say he is not able to do what he has promised when he did something for you yesterday when he did something for you last month see what the lord has done see what i want you in just one minute to reflect in your mind of the faithfulness the mercies the grace and the goodness of God knowing that if he has done it yesterday he will do it again today has come to pass see what the Lord has done Lord has done. in fact by the time I was done thanking God there was no more prayer point again I knew that I knew that I knew God would surprise people today and I'm saying it again. Some of you, after this service, to go home will be a problem. You'll find yourself sitting on your chair.
dazzled at the things that you witness with your own eyes here and now it's all right even if you say amen or not you know a preacher once said that you don't say amen to news when it is casted Uh i'm telling you some of you where you are seated is where you'll be seated after the service just lost in awe and amazement is it god that did this before my eyes they will have to tap you to go home are you hearing me now that's the dimension we're about to see this night oh i'm just going to say something so build your faith and there's going to be a harvest of miracles here what you've waited for the song says it has come this is the time god is saying to that person who has waited for a long time maybe for a husband for a wife a change in your career you are tired you've been in one spiritual level for a long time right now it seems like you are already losing your strength nothing new has happened this is the time for you to rise to another level may the name of god be glorified romans chapter 1 verse 16 Let's get to the word quickly and, uh, and position our hearts for what God will do. The section of the word of God is very important in a miracle service. It's very, very important. This is where faith comes. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. It is this section now that will plant the seed of faith in your spirit for you to believe God for what he will do. Are we together here? So I want your heart to be open. I want you to grab the word as it comes with faith. I want you to be expectant. For some of you as the word comes, fire will break up, break forth in your spirit. I'm telling you. All of a sudden your eyes will be opened and you will begin to piece the puzzle together. Strategies will be revealed. I'm telling you. In fact, deliverances will be happening as the word is coming forth. Can we continue? Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I just want to share a little of my conviction with us tonight to challenge us. And then we'll rise up and pray. And trust God to do what he wants to do in this place. If it's just one person that God wants to visit tonight, I think it was worth our coming. But I know that everybody will live with a testimony. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the word power. Somebody say power. Power. The word power there is the word dunamis. Inherent ability. Potentials that is capable It says it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Take note note of the word believes. They say believed in past tense. Believes. He said for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? The end is because it communicates a power. That is able to bring a man into the salvation that God offers. The word salvation there is the Greek word soteria. When I check the meaning of that word, it means more than just forgiveness of sins. Please pay attention here. Somebody light will come to you in this section. It means more than forgiveness of sins. It means more than justification. The salvation there also means healing of your physical body. It also means deliverance from satanic oppressions. It means preservation as well. In fact, that's one of the chiefest meaning. Preservation. It means sanctification. In fact, that word soteria, salvation there, is all encompassing. Everything that a man needs to be free and to live in peace. That's the meaning of the word there. So it was not just talking about salvation of sins alone. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The word gospel there is the word good news. Every religion has a message. And seems to boast 
of being the religion or being the bridge that connects men with God. We have several religions on earth. Every one of them attempts to proffer to humanity the solution of mankind, which is a bridge between mankind and God. Every one of them boasts to connect humanity to divinity. Some of them say that there is a supreme being somewhere. They give that being all kinds of names and postulate all kinds of formula, theory, patterns by which you can connect or by which you can be a recipient of what this supreme being has to offer. The difference between Christianity and all these religions is that Christianity is the only one that boasts of giving the individual a personal relationship with God. Can you hear me at all? It's only us that claim that a mortal man can come into relationship with God. You don't find that in Islam, respectfully speaking. You don't find that in Hindu or in any other religion. And the message of Christianity is what the Bible calls the message called the good news. The good news that Jesus came to die for mankind so that man can be reconciled back to God. Every religion has a message one way or another. So what separates us from other religions? What separates Christianity? In fact, what makes Christianity not just a religion but a, an experience, a revelation and a lifestyle? Is that our own message is the one that carries and communicates power. Somebody say power. power. He said for it is the power of God unto salvation. So when this message of the gospel is received and believed by an individual. It brokers an economy of the power of God made available for that individual. And that power made available is capable. It has the potential of translating the entirety of that individual's life not only does it forgive your sins but it brings you out of sickness into health it brings you out of destruction and guarantees deliverance it guarantees preservation it guarantees sanctification everything that you need to be free and to live in peace is what it guarantees you for it is the power of God unto salvation. That means therefore <laughs> that any Christianity that is professed or practiced denying the end point which is the power version or the power dimension of it is not Christianity. Did you hear what I said? For it is the power of God. The end of it is to supply an economy of power. So if you find somebody practicing something or living a particular experience that does not communicate a reservoir of power, it means it's not Christianity. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we don't go through seasons of dealings with God. I'm not saying we don't go through processes with God. There are seasons where your faith will be tried as a believer. But remember that the Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. In Psalms 1, he says, Whose leaf shall not wither? So even before he bears fruit, while he's awaiting the season of fruitfulness, there is sign that there is life inside of him. His leaves shall not wither. If the leaf of a tree begins to wither and fall down, it means there's no life in that tree. So you may not have the car you are believing God for. You may not have the admission you are trusting God for. You may not have the spouse that you have been praying and believing God for. You may not have physical evidences around, around your life that communicates the reality of the power of God. But there's something growing in your spirit. You can sense this inside of you that there's a transformation going on. And it's only a matter of time that what is inside of you called dunamis will become a living expression. For it is the power of God unto salvation. If you want to fully understand the import of salvation that is used in this scripture here, let me give you one scripture that I think communicates the full package of salvation that a believer should enjoy. Psalms 103 from verse 2. I think this scripture communicates the full package. You must experience each and every one of these. 
to authenticate your salvation experience. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then he begins to list the benefit from verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities. Is that good to hear? But it doesn't end there. It goes on. Who heals all. Somebody say all. all. Do you notice that there is a similarity between these two statements? Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. That means the same power that can forgive you of all your sins is available to heal all your diseases. God will not heal one sickness and leave the other one. No way. Let's go on. More benefits of salvation. Who redeems your life from destruction? Look at this. That's why I like that song. When I am down, I know my soul the weary. When trouble comes, and my heart bored in thee. Now I am still waiting in the silence until so you may be down but you are not out you keep waiting on him until he comes through you raise me up you raise me up so i can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on strong i am strong i am strong when I am on your shoulders, you raise me up to more than I can be. I like the last line of that song. You raise me up to more than I can be. Paul said we are pressed on every side but not crushed. We are persecuted but not abandoned. We are cast down but not out, not destroyed. That's why it is, it is bad when anybody gives up on you. Maybe not for other individuals. But it is, it is risky to give up on a believer. Struck down, he said, but not destroyed. Always bearing in our bodies the dying of Jesus Christ. That the life of Christ may be revealed. He said, who redeems your life? Go back to that scripture. From destruction. There were sicknesses that would have killed you before now. Even you, you knew. Many times you saw dead people while you were on that bed. But how you are alive today and the same organ they said had failed and it is still working is a question only God can answer. Who redeems your life from destruction? The true Daniel into the lion's den. It was as good as dead. Because the Bible says when they later threw his accusers, before they touched the, the floor of the den, the lions had torn them into pieces. Though he was in the den of lions, yet he was not destroyed. That's what the Bible calls redemption. Who redeems your life from destruction. Joseph was in the pit, but he didn't die of thirst. Came into Potiphar's house. They threw him into prison. He was not forgotten there. David was in the wilderness. He was not forgotten there. Roaming the wilderness for 13 years. At a point he even forgot he was anointed. When Saul died, he said, I will Saul die as though he was not anointed. He forgot that Samuel had anointed him. He felt Saul was the only anointed one. But the Bible says in Job chapter 23... I believe in verse 10. He said, for he knows the way that I take. Verse 10 or verse 12. He said, after he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Who redeems your life from destruction? What did, it, what did God tell Satan when he came to argue his case on Job? He said, touch everything around him, but spare his life. Who redeems your life? Some of you have seen accident face to face. How your boss escaped it is, is something that God will answer when we get to heaven. Some of you have come out from a tricycle that tumbled upside down, wrecked. And how you were standing is only God. 
How about arrows by night and day? How about all kinds of witchcraft manipulation? Don't you know that they are where they are now in their coven, surprised that you are not dead by now? You know, someone once told me that if a witch comes to greet you in the morning, it's not greeting, they are coming to check. How come is he still standing? How on a day? When I sleep well? Then they go back again. But the Bible says in Job chapter 5, it says, He shall deliver you in six troubles, and in the seventh, no evil shall touch you. Do you believe that? Who redeems your life? Please help us with the sound. Who redeems your life from destruction? Let's go on. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? To redeem you from destruction is okay, but you can be redeemed and be poor. You can be redeemed and still have to pay debts. That member of your family was sick. Finally, the person was healed. But remember, you spent your life savings as a family. Now you are in debt. Is God going to leave you like that? The Bible says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know the meaning of these two, sentence, these two words? Favor. That's what it means. Loving kindness. Kindness that is loving. Let's go on. He said, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Brothers and sisters, what kind of food do you eat that makes you grow younger? In this our world. Your food has not changed though. It's still gari that you eat and rice. But you are looking better and younger than even those who seem to have everything. The Bible says the little that the righteous have is better than the wealth of the wicked. You know why? Because your own is mixed with grace. Oh yes. They say we have six classes of food. Plus grace, seven. Yes. That's the reason why when we pray for food. They, they call it saying the grace. And you pray, you bless it. You say the grace over it. You add grace to that food. Just the way you add salt to food to taste. And you know what grace is? Somebody once said, grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Paid for. So it's the same food you are eating, but you are growing younger. It's the same food you are eating, yet you have not taken an injection this year. It's the same environment, mosquito is biting everybody there, but you have not gone to the hospital. You are alive and well. The person who slept under mosquito net is the one sick of malaria. You that don't even have a net on your window, it's open heavens. You are, you are trusting God. Do you know open heavens? So that your youth is renewed. Brothers and sisters, I believe that this scripture best communicates to us the full package of the salvation experience. But I came tonight to challenge you. Because it is time for us not just to realize that the power of God is perhaps the most important component of the gospel. The ability of God that empowers a man to become like God, to express the life of God, to make you a sign and a wonder. The end point of this gospel message that you have received and believed is that there should be a display, a daily display of something called the power of God unto salvation. So it's not enough for us to just understand and accept it, but it is also enough for us to begin to contend for it. Because the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You must contend for the power of God. You must say no to a life that doesn't experience or is void of the power and the grace of God. You must say no to a life. You know, Satan is trying to pre present a false picture to us. How can you be saved and carry the life of God in you? And there are not there are no situations or, or circumstances around you that communicate that there is another thing at work inside of you. How come? So I came here tonight to challenge us. This is the reason why 
miracle services like this are set up. It is so that we can come and have a first hand experience of what the power of God can do when it is allowed to find expression among men so that you can receive of that power and walk in the fullness of it. Even Jesus did not allow them to begin to witness the gospel of the kingdom. He said, but you shall receive power. That is the end. That was why he stayed with them three and a half years. Even when he resurrected, he came back and was teaching them for 40 days. He was preparing them for an economy of the kingdom that they will receive on account of the Holy Spirit's coming. It is called power. It is like that is what seals up your Christian experience. Do you know that even when we are done on this earth, what we call the rapture experience, when the Bible says that, corruptible will put on incorruptible that means those who have died will be resurrected in a new body and this mortality will put on immortality those of us alive we will be clothed with our immortal body the kind of body that jesus had when he resurrected do you know that it will happen by power the bible says in philippians 3 verse 20 to 21 it says for our citizenship is of heaven from whence we look to our savior who is able to transform our lowly bodies. He said by the same power with which he subdues all things. Is that what verse 21 says? By the same power. According to the walking. The word walking there is the word energia. It is the highest form for power in Greek language. It means that not only are you overwhelmed with power. But you now become a reservoir of power. It is you, you are giving it on a daily basis. Remember that the Bible calls Jesus the life-giving spirit. And remember that you and I have been born of him. We have been begotten of his kind. So we too are also life-giving spirits. And for every time that God uses you to rot a sign and a wonder, what, you, what happened was that you gave a measure of power out. That word here, walking, is the word energia. It's the highest form for power. So we must, we must convince ourselves that you were safe to live a glorious life. You were safe to experience the fullness. It was supposed to be an adventurous lifestyle. Not this beggarly and weak life that is, that is presented to you by the situation of Nigeria. Not this lie in form of a life that Satan has forced you to believe. No. You were not created to be weak and beggarly. You were created as a vessel of power. You were forged by power. You were made by power. And you must live by power. In one scripture it says of Jesus, it says, who lives by the power of God. Romans 1 verse 3 says, he was declared to be the son of God with power. Somebody say power. He didn't just say son of God. He said he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness there is so much that the power of god can do in the life of a man it has a way of bringing transformation that cuts across your spirit soul and bodily dimension it is power that causes changes in the natural if things will change in the physical there must be an introduction of power and the bible says once as he spoken and twice have I heard that power belongs to who? Thank God that it doesn't belong to the enemy. Thank God that it doesn't belong to a rich man. Imagine how much you have to pay. But God has recited it in your spirit. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. If you find a believer... If you find a believer that is ashamed to witness the gospel. If you find a believer that is ashamed of being publicly or, or, or confessing publicly that he or she is a Christian. If you find at any time that a believer seems to be unconscious of the Christian life and experience that his life should communicate. It is because there is a missing element of power. In that believer's testimony or in that believer's experience go for evangelism 
That's when everybody is running inside. Those days when we used to go for evangelism, or maybe we are going for crusade rally. How many of you did that? Crusade rally. If you are not done it, what are you waiting for? Better look for how to do it before you leave this world. Though. Aha. Because preaching the gospel is the responsibility of every believer. As long as you mention the name Jesus and you have been saved, your life must contribute to the spread of the gospel. He said, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring it forth the good news. Why do you think Jesus was standing in heaven when Stephen was that di- when we were stoning Stephen? He looked up in the vision and he saw Jesus standing for him. It was a standing ovation. Did Jesus not say, Blessed are you when men persecute you and do all manner of things against you? He said, Rejoice, for the kingdom of heaven is yours. The Bible says that they loved not their lives unto the death. And because of that, some of them, because of what they went through for the sake of the gospel, and because of the gospel that they preached, go to heaven, the new Jerusalem. The Bible says it is founded on stones on which is written the names of the apostles. So if you don't contribute your own quota in the spread of the gospel, your reward will be small. We will not all be equal in the other life. I shouldn't be saying the other life. Let me say the next dispensation because you will, your life will not end. The only thing is that you will drop this physical body and put up a spiritual body. But your life never ends. Some of you will reign over a thousand. Some of you over a hundred thousand. Some of you over cities. Why some of you will serve? That's why it's important we are called as living witnesses of the gospel. So if you find a believer who is ashamed of that, those days when we go for rally, they will fetch small of the, of the flyer because they want to distribute quick, quick. And they will distribute in a place where they don't know them. When they get to an environment where they are friends, ah, ah, they will just hide inside because they know what the how some man calls karambani. They know their own karambani. So imagine the people that you do all those things with. They say, ah, you two, they share flyer, they share flyer. One time we went for such a rally like that. One of the thugs, he came around. He went on and they share, collected the flyer. He said, if this one day I know will come, he pointed to one of the brothers. He said, this one, I know will come. Now your church, I will come. I know will come this one. I say, brother. <laughs> So what makes a, a weak and a beggarly life? When you find a Christian experience that is a toy in the hands of the devil. When you find an individual who professes the name of God, but is still subject to circumstances and situation around. It's because there is a missing element of power. And until you get that power, you can't live as a king and a priest on the earth. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 he said therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away for if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward go on how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation the reason why it was great was because of the power that accompanied it. He said, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. Go to verse 4. He said, God also bearing witness to this same salvation, this same gospel. He said, God bearing witness with what? Signs and what? Wonders and what? Various miracles. It also end there. And what? And gifts of the Holy Spirit evidences tangible proof of the power of god the bible says in signs and wonders in various miracles there must be a proof that what you are practicing what you are living is called christianity i will say it again and again christianity is not a religion as far as i'm concerned it is a revelation it is an experience and a lifestyle what did i say it is a revelation it is an experience and a lifestyle 
One time they, 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 they said of the apostles in one of the cities they went to preach. They said these men who have turned the world upside down have come here. Catch them before they turn this place upside down too. Why? Because there was living witness of the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. God is waiting on your life to produce certain kinds of results. And that is when the people around your neighborhood will truly be saved. One of the ways by which the relevance of the church will be restored and maintained is when the power equation is constant, even to the least amongst us, even to our children, that they walk in the manifestation of the power of God. Well, you know our generation, what we inherited mostly was stories and salvation, isn't it? Some of you grew up with, respectfully speaking, loving mothers and fathers who loved God, who were prayerful, who served God. But there was an experience that was missing in their life. And the reason why you have caught God at a young age, the reason why you have come to know the Holy Ghost at a, an early age, is so that your life can replace what was missing in their experience. That the power dimension which was lost can be restored. And it's something that you will transfer to your children. You tell them that we are called Christians. They say, Daddy, who is a Christian? You tell him, someone who is born of God. And he says, who is that that is born of God? Who is born of God? You tell him, the one that is born of God is the one that communicates the power that resides in God. To as many that received him, to them he gave what? To become what? That's it. He said, God bore witness. Preaching the gospel will be easy when we understand and we live in the power economy. Imagine a world where blind eyes are opened in our meetings, in our crusades. Deaf here. Where the cripple walk. That person who is crippled in your neighborhood, for God knows how long you pack in there. And one day you go to that person to visit the person like Peter. He says, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have. And instantly the person begins to walk. You don't need to preach any gospel again. In fact, even if your prayer is disturbing them in that neighborhood, nobody will talk. Because it's he that has the power, that has rule. Some of the things we pray and labor for, when you walk in a full revelation of the power of God, those things will no longer be prayer requests. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was so engrossed with power, so consumed, intoxicated with it, that he went about engaging in philanthropic activities. The Bible says he went about doing good. It's not like now that we are preparing for a crusade or a conference. You will do advertisement, do everything, print billboard and everything and people will not come. No. <laughs> that one, Jesus can walk to a marketplace, look for a man whose hand is withered and say, stretch out your hand. And the man stretches out his hand. Crusade has started. The Bible says, in fact, one time in Luke chapter 6, when he had prayed all night, he came down and the crowd were gathered around him. The Bible says they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they were healed. He said, but then they sought to touch him for power flowed from him. It was obvious. And that is the reason why when Jesus was leaving, he told the disciples, if you go out without power, they will stone you. Because they saw when I was alive and they saw what I could do. It is a man, a believer that contends to walk in the power of God that can validate that Jesus is alive. You were not there when he resurrected. Till today, Jews still believe the story that was spread. That the disciples stole his body and claimed he resurrected. So the only way we can prove that he resurrected from the tomb is not by seeing an empty tomb. You can carve an empty tomb and put it there. The only way to validate that he resurrected from death was when there is a demonstration of power. He who died and rose again Opened up the grave na, 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 na. You know that song? Worthy is the lamb Worthy is the lion Worthy is the son of God 
I'm going to sing that song. I like that part I sang. That's the part I like. He who died and rose again. I don't know the other ones, but I know that one. I catch that one. He who died and rose again. You don't know what it means to rise from the dead. Have you seen a dead body before? Even a dead fly. Have you seen a dead fly? Go online. Maybe if you are lucky, you can see it on YouTube. Harare Miracle Crusade by God's servant, the Lake Archbishop Bensi. Hi. See, eh? There will be no explanation as Nigerians. We will not have any explanation to God if we continue like this till Jesus comes. Go online. You can search it. You will be lucky if you see the, vi the video. Get the lyrics of that song. Oh, we are going to sing it. He went for a crusade in Zimbabwe, Harare, fire conference, miracle conference, or fire conference, that's what they call it. They brought a woman who was dead. She was so dead that the flies on her mouth were dead. And as soon as the man of God began to declare, all of a sudden, the flies on the woman stood up and started going around. So the resurrection caught the flies first. Then the woman stood up alive. What kind of message do you preach again? Is Jesus alive? Yes. Prove it. Your generation will ask you one day. Dodge it now, but you will enter a system in, in form of a, a, a job, a career, and a day will come. Maybe you will be in the bank and somebody is counting money in the bulk room and the person just slumps. So you will join them and look for medical personnel. Or that you will go there and hold the hand of that lady and say, Talita Kumi. Let them know that all that is def your definition is not just standing behind the counter. You see, we think that walking in the power of God is only exclusive to believers. That's the reason why uh, it's only exclusive to pastors, to ministers. That's the reason why believers don't mind living carnal lives and entering into society. But let me tell you the truth. It's in society we need the power of God more. Those of you in the business sector, in the banking sector, do you know the, 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 the fortress of darkness that is in that place? You go for a political campaign and while you are there declaring your manifesto, the person who is speaking just falls down and begins to bleed in his mouth. And you want them to vote your party. Next thing, newspaper will carry it. Now you people are ritualists. Until somebody in that campaign say, no, I may be a politician, but I have an economy called power. Yes, eh? We can salvage the situation and return back to the speech. Go online and look for that conference. Harare Fire Conference. Mighty things that God did there. I don't know. Kai, I will ask the Lord Jesus one of these days. I want... I want Ask Bishop Bensi Dauza to appear to me. I want to ask him some questions. What did you know as a man? He went to preach one time in another country and they planned to frame him up. So they put a lady to stay in the wardrobe in his room, in his hotel room. And then the press guys were around hiding somewhere. So the plan was as he comes back and enters his room, the lady would just come out from the wardrobe naked and then cameras will come and begin to snap and everything. He came back and while he was sleeping, somebody was shouting, fire, 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 oh, fire, fire, fire. When they opened the wardrobe, the lady was screaming there for fire and began to confess. Guess what? It was captured that almost half of her body has suffered bones. The man of God didn't pray, he went to sleep. Somebody say fire. fire. I'm telling you. You know that flies cannot perch on hot food. Flies cannot get near the fire. And you know another name for Satan is Beelzebub. Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. Okay. So you can choose to be like that hot food. You know those kind of food they serve with smoke. You see the smoke coming out. You don't dare touch it. You wait for it to cool first. One day I was complaining that there were flies in my parlor. You know, because during the day I like to turn on the air condition because of the heat. 
And then somebody now told me the reason why the flies are there is because they like cool places. I say, eh. So I need to fireize the place then. Somebody shall fire. fire. Listen, you came tonight, not only will you see God move in your life in the short time that we have, but you are going to live here with a deposit of God's power. It's time to go back and challenge those demonic forces around your family. It is time to challenge those witchcraft attacks around you. It is time to pursue the oppressor. Like somebody will say, you pursue the pursuer and you oppress the oppressor. The, the Bible not say in Isaiah chapter 9 in verse 5, it says you have broken the staff of the oppressor as in the day of Midian. All of those dreams you have and you are oppressed. It is time for you to go back and sleep and in the dream you are the one fighting. Recently I had a dream. <laughs> I finished praying I went to sleep. And I had a dream and I was beating some people. And I was afraid. I said, well, why am I this wicked in the dream? It's not wickedness though. Some people need that. Go to my last scripture and then we'll pray. Psalm 66 verse 3. Beating them mercilessly. I say, ah ah. I wanted to be compassionate, but I was... Ah, no. We've played too much with the devil. We've toyed too much with him. We've allowed certain situations to mock our God for too long. It's time for us to arise. He said, arise, shine, for your light has come. You arise. In Ephesians 5, he said, awake from the dead, you who, and rise from the dead, awake from sleep. He said, and Christ will give you light. God is waiting on your rising. You are asking God, lift me. God is saying, you stand up and I will lift you. I know a man of God who was coming back from an all night, an all night service, and he had an accident and broke his leg in three places. When he opened his eyes, he was in the hospital. You know, all this orthopedic section of the hospital. Your leg is so broken that they will tie it up. You know, <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Once you find yourself in an orthopedic section, you are going to be there. His retreat, you will be there for a while. And in case there is any bone condition here, yeah, it will be fixed tonight like the bones of Ezekiel. His leg was hanging there. <laughs> Then when then the nurses had left, he spoke to God. He said, God, I want to talk to you. Take this chair by my bed and sit down. I want us to talk. And then he began to talk. He said, if I was coming back from a club and this happened to me, you are justified. If I was coming back from a prostitute's house and this happened to me, you are justified. If I went to rob somebody, but I went for some shady business deals and this happened to me you are justified but I am coming back from your own service I preach the gospel your own gospel souls were saved lives were transformed what are you going to say what will you allow men say about this experience this is a man talking to God empty chair instantly he heard a voice and the voice said son take the first step and I will complete the rest and being a man of faith, this is a true story I'm telling you. Being a man of faith, he brought his leg down with pains. The pains were still there. But God had spoken. Once has he spoken. Brought the leg down, touched the ground. When he stood up, he had a cracking sound on his leg. And the bones came back together. He walked out of that hospital. Story had it that one of the nurses at the reception, when she saw him walking as she fainted. He who died and rose again. Do you have the song for us? That's the song that I'm, I'm, I'm sensing in my spirit. Listen, I'm telling you, God will do things this night. In fact, he has started. But I want to provoke you to go back and say, God, it has to be more than this. How long will I keep asking for people to pray for me? How long will I keep staring? Some of you are living with certain problems, certain demonic forces around your life. You know what they call face me, I face you. Have you seen those houses? In Nigeria, for those who are streaming from abroad, in Nigeria, there are houses where they are opposite each other. We call them face me. 
Some of you, that's how you have faced me. I face you with demons. Every night, nightmare. Every night, nightmare. Give me that last scripture and let's pray. Psalm 66, verse 3. He says, say to God, how awesome are your works. King James say, how terrible are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. So how do you conquer the enemy? One word. Say it again. That's all. I believe in authority, but authority cannot manifest until power has cleared the scene. Through the, through the greatness of your power. I heard the story of a man who went to a village and said, If you are a witch, come and repent. That's how they do crusade. You know, our own, we use sound, we use camera, everything. And then we'll dance and pray and jump. And when it's time for the miracle service, we'll dance for 25 minutes just doing everything all the motion see let me tell you power is a revelation it's a spiritual substance if you carry it there's no need for all those things if you are a witch come out and repent only two came out they thought he was joking because you know satan is not all knowing so sometimes satan cannot know cannot scan the full scope of an individual and the story had it that he prayed for the witches delivered them and he left and then the next day one witch died in the village the next day another witch the next day another witch they had to go and the village came to go and went and called him say come we want to repent now <laughs> therefore god has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the name jesus every knee shall bow sickness shall bow poverty shall even poverty responds to power let me tell you the truth and eh? i believe in buying and selling i believe in the transactional side of wealth but do you know that the power of god can bring you into an economy of wealth that natural laws cannot explain the widow went to elisha said they are coming to take my children as as as, as debtors he said, what do you have? Oil. He said, that's enough. Go and borrow vessels. Every time there was famine in those days, they just went to the prophet. They didn't go to the minister of agriculture or the minister of the economy. They didn't have a meeting with the economic council or distribute palliatives. No. There was famine in Israel. A prophet stood up and said, by this time tomorrow, There is a dimension of God's power that can come on your life. And you will enter into a dimension of wealth that the witches and wizards in your hometown don't understand. You break into, you know, sometimes there's something they call sleeping on duty. We're about to pray now. There's something they call sleeping on duty. So maybe the witches were sleeping on duty. And then you, you broke into an economy of the power of God. And instantly the finances around you begin to respond to it. They wake up and say, no, 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 no. Nobody in this family is supposed to have this kind of wealth. Let me tell you something. The first time I was blessed in millions. Till today I can't explain it. I went to bed with 88, I'll be 80 naira in my account. I slept. And in the sleep I had a dream. And I saw three people standing and talking within themselves. This was January. Not January ending. Middle January. You know what happens in middle January? You don't know what happens. May God not allow you to know what happens. Middle January. And then I saw three men in, in, in my sleep. They were discussing. I couldn't hear what they were saying. I only heard what one of them said. They pointed at me. I said, let's give it to him. I woke up the next day and I saw millions in my account. I saw seven figures. I say, is this how it works? When we went for prayers that day, I just stood at one point and said, so I'm not poor again. <laughs> just like that. Somebody say, just like that. <laughs> without texting anybody, without collecting from anybody, there is wealth by prophecy. Oh. There is the power dimension of wealth. For he giveth the power 
to get wealth. There's something that can happen to you by God. And it will veto every natural law. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not encouraging laziness. But brother, I'm telling you that there is a power side to wealth. Money is a spirit. It can answer. The Bible says money answereth. Uh -huh. It answereth to those who, are, who carry the economy of power. How else will we bring deliverance in a world under the subjected under satanic oppression? How else can we bring deliverance from poverty? Can't you look at our world today? Now, nations of the world, the leaders and president, they held a, an economic summit recently, an economic pact. What they want to do from that council is they want to tax countries. I hope you know what that means. You don't know. Okay. Because they discovered many nations are in debt. So how do they service the debts of nations? So they want to tax countries. But they are arguing. Some say IMF should control it. Some say no. Let's have a new architecture because IMF is controlled by the West. Well, whichever be the case. But poverty is one of the weapons the enemy is using in the last days. People compromise because of poverty. Dreams have been short-lived. Delay can be because of poverty. Well, let me tell you something. Some of you can have business ideas worth 500,000. Do you know? You may have waited for three years to start that business. With 500,000, there's no need for you to wait again. And that's the reason why we must walk in the power of God. Because in the days ahead, the church will become the solution to the world. And if you are here tonight, it's because God wants to do something in your life. When you leave this place, you become a vessel of the power of God. Can you hold the hands of your neighbor and just pray for one minute? Lord, let something break open in my life tonight. I'm tired of an ordinary life. I'm tired of facing the same cycles of problems again and again. I'm tired of being mocked. My salvation experience does not look like what I've seen in scripture. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me Jabez said he said in Psalms through the greatness of your power through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves there's a dimension of grace and power that your world is waiting to see there is something inside of you that needs to be provoked there is something inside of you that needs to break forth just pray in the spirit for one minute. Something will be activated in your life tonight. Something will be stirred up in your life tonight. There's going to be a revolution tonight. Not only will you see miracles, but God is bringing you to that place where you yourself will become a sign and a wonder to your world. Just preach your name upon me, bring. Just preach your name upon me, bring. Yod Hevaye is your name, bring, Lord. Just preach your name upon me. Some of you need to cry and say, Lord. What I want tonight is a dose, a dose of your power. I'm tired of living an ordinary life. Make me a channel, a vessel, a contact point. Nations are waiting for you. Your world is waiting for you. You were created as the solution to the crisis around you. Oh, but that you will arise tonight and that Christ will give you light. That Christ will give you light. There must be a change. Something new must begin to happen in my life. That's why I came. Celebrate, 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 celebrate
Please be upstanding. We are going to pray. Can we pray for five minutes? And then after that, I'll begin, I'll begin to minister. We are going to be very quick. In fact, I sense a strong prophetic anointing here. We are going to be very quick. Listen to me. We are going to pray. Listen. Just listen. 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 How many of you have experienced situations in your life where it's like you are going through a stubborn cycle of pain, of reproach, of lack? The more you are trying to go, come out of it, is the more you seem to slip in. How many of you have experienced that before? I want to show you one of the ways to be able to break free from those cycles. One of the ways to come out of a wilderness season. There's something that you must learn to do. There was three and a half years of drought, no rain or dew in Israel. Is that true? And then after the slaughtering of the 450 prophets of Baal and the fire that fell from heaven, God told Elijah, he said, I will send rain. Elijah told Ahab, he said, get thee up hands and eat, for I hear in my ears the sound of the abundance of rain. But the Bible says, Elijah went and cast his head between his thighs. There is something called traveling. To break free from that stubborn cycle. You know why I use the word stubborn? Because you have done everything that you should do. It seems not to end. There is a dimension of prayer that we call travail. To break forth and come out from it. And that was what Elijah did. Seven times he prayed. Until there was a cloud like the size of a man's hand. But you know the reason why we don't get to do it. Is because when you are getting to the end. Near the end of your wilderness experience. You become frustrated. Discouraged depressed there's no strength to pray again meanwhile as soon as zion traveled that is the time where you muster every other strength you have and i told them at the vigil we had for the workers i told them that when there is no longer a strength to pray let responsibility force you to pray when there is no longer physical strength you draw from the might that is inside of your spirit because it is in traveling you break forth if you can travel for the next five minutes this night, some of you, eh? What has kept you from January to June? Everything together will break open in July. Amen. Remember the testimony I gave you? I went to sleep with 18 naira. I woke up a millionaire. And you know what's so amazing about that story? Till today, I don't know where one million out of that money came from. There's no sender. And you tell me there's no prophetic dimension to wealth. You tell me there's no spirit dimension to wealth. The Bible says it daily loaded us with benefit. But for six days now you have to borrow. Don't you know that there is a traveling you can do in prayer that will force compliance. It has been written. But for it to manifest there is a travail that you must engage in prayer. Angels don't just move because they want to move. The Bible says they hearken to the voice of his word. The voice of his word is the cry in the place of prayer of the children of God as they keep praying for the promises of God. If you can travel this night, something will open for your family. Amen. Psalm 71 verse 21, we are going to pray two prayers and we are done. And I will minister tonight. The fire of God is in this place. Psalm 71 verse 21. I want you to read it. It's on the screen at the count of three. One, two, three. You shall increase my greatness. You shall what? Increase my greatness. You have celebrated where you are for too long. It's time to increase. He said, and comfort me on every side. If not, you will be in trouble. Because every blessing introduces you to a new level of warfare. 
But when he comforts you on every side, you will be like Solomon who said in 1 Kings chapter 5. He says, so God has given me rest on every side. So there is neither adversity nor trouble. Is a realm. Are you ready to pray? I want you to hold this scripture and I want you to cry your heart out as if the heavens will literally tear over you right now. Oh Lord, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. Raise your voice and pray. Come on, come on, come on. Lift your voice. 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 Thou shall increase my greatness. Somebody is praying. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. It's time to ascend to a higher dimension of grace, a higher level of the anointing. It's time to begin to command results on a superior level. It's time to begin to do ministry on a higher level with a higher command of power. Thou shall increase my greatness. Somebody is praying. Somebody is praying. Somebody cry to Jehovah. Oh God, increase my greatness. Comfort me on every side. Comfort me on every side. Somebody cry to Jehovah. The God that answers by fire must answer you tonight. Kabaragabala de Belorogo Bososo, Epo Sabata, Eparusia, Eprasokotoba, Eprasabarata Kaya. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Oh God, increase me in my career, in my academics. It's time to go from grade C to grade A. In my relationships, in my spiritual life, no more weakness. Increase me in grace. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Please give me volume on my mic. It seems to hide when we are praying. Listen. The Bible says, While men slept, the enemies came and sowed tires. And when they awoke, the servants asked him, He said, Master, did we not sow good seeds? And then he said to them, An enemy has done this. Can we confront some satanic devices around your life? God is ready to settle you, but there is a Pharaoh that must let you go. The promised land is sure, but there is a Pharaoh that must be judged. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Tonight, oh God, arrest every power of darkness, every force of the enemy planted around my life, stopping me from entering my rest. Be arrested now. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Be arrested by fire. 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 Paragosia. Paragetekelekete. 
Lekete baragata baragata, shabaragata baragata baragata, rekete belekete belekete, isha baragata ragata, rikaposa, mesa baragatoso, esa pola karada, ira pada hasya, isa baragata, isa kabaragata, ila parosa, isa poria dakara, be arrested now, whether which, whether by witchcraft. Whether by occultism, ancestral forces, territorial forces, satanic forces. Shabele kete baragada baragada siaka, ebere go siaka ba. Nado kaka sunanta, ubangi jika isaya bo. Nadi mama sunanta, ubangi jika. Nado kaka sunanta, ubangi jika isaya bo. Nadi mama. Sunanta, you bangi chi. We raise your banner high. We raise your name so bright. Dago kaka, Sunanta, you bangi chi. Nado kaka, Sunanta, you bangi chi ka isayabo. Nadi mama sunanta, ubangi chi. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want us to deal with stubborn cycles in our lives, cycles of pain, cycles of reproach, cycles of shame. We are going to deal with it this night. There are satanic devices that are called cycles. Alright? Do you realize that the end of a cycle is the beginning? The very end is the beginning. That means there is no progression as far as the cycle is concerned. In terms of linear motion. There is no progress in terms of linear motion. So the person will go... And at a time, it looks like everything is fine and the person has broken through. But that same cycle, it's like somebody's engineering or controlling it, brings you back to the same place. Some of you, there is an amount that you cannot get beyond. Once that amount is in your account, all kinds of needs will come till it goes down to the zero, zero that used to be in the account. It's a cycle. In your finance, in your spiritual life, every time you want to ascend a new level, that's when all kinds of attack comes. And the attacks leave you depressed and frustrated. It's a cycle. We must learn how to break stubborn cycles. Are we ready to pray? He said, it will be as though a man fled from a lion. And what met him? A bear. Or as though he went into the house. Now he ran away from the bear. Leaned his hand on the wall. And what met him there? A serpent. That's what I call a cycle of attacks. You are coming out of this one, another one bigger is coming. You are trying to break free from this one, another attack. Why do you think he said he shall deliver you from six troubles? Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Some of you, this prayer is for your family. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you in your business, you are not rising, truly speaking. It's like a cycle. You will go up today and come down tomorrow. Are you ready to break free once and for all? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Every, stubborn Every stubborn demonic cycle. I can't hear you. Every stubborn demonic cycle. Around my life. Around my life. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Be destroyed forever. Be destroyed forever. 
In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Lepos Shabrata Kaburu Siapana. Rekepete Legate Belegate Regate. Every stop on cycle. Every stop on cycle. Cycle of defeat. Cycle of hate, of hatred. Cycle of reproach. Cycle of shame. Cycle of poverty and lack. Cycle of stagnation. Cycles of reprogression. Cycles of pain. Cycles of affliction. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. I can't hear you, somebody. I can't hear you, somebody. La coborogodosia. Le cabaragada la baragadasia. E kabaragada la da baragabala de bos. Se coborogodo lo do borodo do borodo do borodo do. Cycle of defeat. Hey! There is no God like my God. There is no God like my God. There is no God like my God. Enough is enough. It comes to an end this night. In Jesus name. He says, say unto God, how terrible are thy works. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves. This is a night where every adversary of your life must be submiss- submitted by the power of God at work here tonight. I'm about to minister to us. This is going to be a very sensitive period. I want your heart to be open. Make sure you are not distracted. And as you are standing here, you are standing in for your loved ones, your family members, those of you that are connecting online. You are connecting on behalf of yourself and your loved ones and your families. I did not ask us to write prayer requests because God has not given us the express permission to make it constant. All right? But that is the reason why as you stand right now or as you are following online, we are going to use you as a point of contact to your family members. A change is coming for somebody. Can we pray now? I'm going to minister deliverance first. And then after that, I'll minister to a few people and then we'll pray for the sick. God is about to tear off the garment of reproach. Whether in your finances, in your family, around and about your life. That thing that makes your life look like the world, Ichabod, is as though God has departed from you and forgotten you. God is about to tear off that garment now. The Bible says he gives beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Please lift your right hand. Just your right hand. I want you to say this after me. Say in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. I can't hear you. 
Tonight, I receive the garment of fire from above. Let it come upon me and consume every garment that is not of God. Every reproach that has plagued my life now. Now. Keep your right hand lifted. Father, all across this place, from the left to the right, the front to the back, I ask that by the ministry of angels right now, I demand that the heavens will be open. Let the garment of fire that you showed me rest upon your children. No, don't say amen. You just wait. Allow me to minister. Let your garment of fire clothe them right now. And let every baggage, every garment, every embargo of darkness that is upon them, let it be torn to pieces and consumed. As I count to seven, Lord, let there be massive deliverances as this garment is falling on people. It's falling on people right now. It's falling on people. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling. Everywhere. Everywhere. From the front to the back. From the left to the right. At the count of seven. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And now seven. Let it fall. 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 Let it fall, let it fall, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Bale Korea Bande Kebrekatekaba. Embrekatekebotoshkapara. Clothe them with that garment of fire. Let there be deliverances now. Take it up by a tone. I want to sing a song by my mentor. Yakare, 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 Yeshu Yache. Just bring them out for me. Yakare, 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 Yeshu Yache, Yakare, 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 Yeshu Yache, Yakare. Please lift your two hands. I'm still praying. Ushers, bring them out. Just bring them out. I want to pray against incantations, spells, enchantments, anything that was spoken against your destiny or your family. Ah, oh my God, I feel the power of my God, my God, my God, my God. Anything that was spoken against you under the cover of darkness, I arrest it now. I arrest it by fire. I arrest it by fire. On the count of three, I want you to shout, Jesus. That spell will be broken. That divination will be destroyed. That incantation will be declared null and void. At the count of three, shout, Jesus. One, two, three, shout, Jesus. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. Help them. Help bring them out. Let it break. Let it break. I cross those, those spells. I break those incantations. For he frustrated the devices of the gravity that their eyes cannot perform their enterprise. I arrest it right now by fire, by fire, by fire. There is only one name. There is only one name. With power to save, with power to save. Our God, our God is champion, He reigns forevermore. Forever. 
Please lift your hands. I'm still praying. I want to cause the spirit of God. Mayako la shaba radukaba apereko soporiata. I want to cause the spirit of poverty. Lift your hands everywhere. Father, I stand by the rod of the Melchizedek priesthood in the name that is above every other name. I arrest the spirit of poverty now. You demon of poverty hanging in the families of anyone here present. I curse you in the name of Jesus. I command you to let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. I break the chains of poverty. I break the chains of poverty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please listen to me. Listen. I'm seeing what looks like locusts. Listen. This is a word for somebody. It's a word of belief. Marandosia. In fact, I just saw the fire of God descend on the congregation. There are two people that this deliverance is for. I saw what looked like locusts. You know locusts? You know locusts? They are devouring creatures. They are insects that can devour. I just saw locusts flying out of a house. There are two families here. Deliverance is coming for you now. That spirit of the canker worm and the locusts. I curse it, my God. Help them. I curse it now. I curse that spirit now. Take your hands off their finances. Take their hands, your hands off their families. In the name of Jesus. You're in, you're in Shen Zion skin. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on Kadosh, 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 That's the drums for warfare. Kadosh, Angels are fighting battles in your families. You and you and you and you ancient science king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You and you and you and Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Hallelujah. I'm still praying. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still I'm ministering. Listen. Listen. I'm ministering. Something is gonna happen. There are at least five people here now that will be set free. God is showing me what looks like a shrine. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing leaves, red cloth like a shrine. And God is saying I should cause ancestral and household wickedness. And the sign is that there will be a release of power here. Anyone that is under that demonic yoke the power of God is about to hit your father's house, your mother's house. And you are going to be set free. Now lift your hands. Father, I stand by this mandate of deliverance. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I appear in everybody's village right now. I cause ancestral wickedness. I cause household wickedness. I cause the powers of the shrine. And I declare, let the fire of God descend and destroy. Descend and destroy. Descend and destroy. Just wait. There will be a shout now. You just wait. Just wait. 
The deliverance is happening now. Angels are uprooting things. Uprooting things. Uprooting things. There's a young man at the back. The hand of God is coming on you. God is saying the powers of your ancestry is broken now. There's a young man at the back. The hand of God will rest upon you. I cause those powers by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I cause those satanic forces. Let the chains be broken now. I declare captivity comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. It comes to an end now. Listen. Seven six nine. I'm seeing a mobile number, and I'm seeing seven six nine among the bob. I'm seeing a mobile number, a phone number, and these three digits are in it. Seven six nine. It's a lady. That's what I'm seeing. God wants to talk to you. Seven six nine. Please look for them. Make sure. Help that lady. The power of God is on her. Seven six nine. My God. Let me minister to this girl because I'm seeing I'm seeing the number on her. Kai, I'm seeing a wicked spirit like a shadow. I curse you out of their lives and their families. I break those foundational yokes now. I present the covenant of the blood and I declare out of her, out of the family now. Seven six nine. Make sure you don't come out anyhow. They call you junior that's because you are bearing the name of somebody and you are a guy that's what i'm seeing in fact it may be more than one person but i'm seeing a guy like chocolate complexion they call you junior that means you are bearing the name of somebody there's junior at the end of your name my god the power of god is in this place all of you here just lift your hands from here to the door from here to the door there is an impartation god is releasing from the air to the door, I'm seeing an impartation of gifts. Even this place, all of you, lift your hands. I'm seeing an angel carrying what looks like coals of fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Let those spiritual gifts be distributed. I activate it now in the name of Jesus. Help them. I activate it now by fire. The gifts of the Spirit, I activate it. God is visiting people this night. Junior, they call you Junior. You are bearing the name of somebody. Yes, sir. You are bearing the name of... You are Junior. What's your full name? Helsinta Moda. Huh? Helsinta Moda. Junior. Yes, sir. Who's, who's, who, who has that name? I don't know, but he's the, he's the namesake of someone. Okay, but... And you are bearing Junior? Yes, sir. Lift your hands. Let me give you a word for your family. All right, God said the reproach and the captivity has been rolled away. Listen, and you are going to experience that there's going to be an experience in this season that is coming. There's going to be breakthroughs one by one. Amen. Everybody, that's what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my right hand. The right hand of God is power. Take that grace for a new level now. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Step into that grace. Reproach is rolled away. Reproach is rolled away. A season of breakthrough comes in the name of Jesus. 769. Can I pray for you, all of you? Wait, all of you lift your hands. All of you bearing it. I'm seeing the hand of God come on two of you. In fact, one of you, there's something that is wrapping around you. I cross it right now. I see the hand of God coming. In the name of Jesus, Father, perfect deliverance right now. Let every embargo of darkness be rolled away right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Touch this lady for me. This one. Does it? No, no, you just stay there. The, the number I'm seeing, the 769, is towards the end of the number. Is that your own? Yes, sir. 
Very good. It's you I want to talk to. Lift your hands. First of all, for you, it's a new season. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I see you standing in front of a door and I see you shaking the door. Shaking it, but it's refusing to open. But by he who has the key of David that opens and no man shuts, every door that has refused to open for your life, for your family, I command it to open now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are here, you are here, you are here in this place, and we worship and adore your holy name. Father, I prophesy over these ones, the ones with the mobile number, a change of story. A change of story. Amen. Touch the young lady with black scarf. I want to minister to her. My dear, just put your right hand on your head. There's a fresh anointing God is releasing on you. And there are yokes of limitation that will break in your life and in your family. Father, I stretch my hand. Let that grace come upon her now. My horn has thou exalted as the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing for the next level. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can return back to your seat. Can I pray some more and we are done? Juliana. 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 But they call you Julie. Juliana. Juliana. Lord, we give you praise. Please stretch your two hands before you, everybody. I want to release a dimension of favor and wealth over you. This July, there are strange, strange dimensions of the favor of God that you are about to witness. Some of you are about to shift in your finances, I'm telling you. Stretch your two hands before you. Father, as their hands are stretched forth, I declare, let the very anointing for favor, the very power to get wealth, let it rest on their hands right now. Amen. In fact, there's somebody I'm seeing. I'm seeing you a man. I'm seeing holes on your hands. I'm seeing holes. And so that means that the enemy has been stealing from your finances. Unexplainable losses. But in the name of Jesus, let those holes be sealed up now. Amen. And I provoke a, pros a prosperity anointing upon your life now. Amen. Within the next 40 days, may my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Let me pray for these ones that are outside. Father, I stand by the blood of the everlasting covenant. I break every legal bond, every legal union that they have with darkness. And in the name of Jesus, I command that they are delivered now. Amen. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, I separate them from every spirit. Every spirit of hell. Out now! Out now! In the name of Jesus Christ. Out now! I'm seeing a snake coming out of one of them. Out now! In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that they are free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we celebrate the Lord? Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Hey, Jesus, we lift up your name. Listen to me, if you have the faith to receive it. There are three people that are into business here. I see an opening in millions for you. In July, this year, this July, this month. I release that grace for exploits. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
begin to do business on a higher financial level in the name of jesus and in addition to that i'm praying miracle jobs right now father let there be a rain of miracle jobs in this place let there be a rain of miracle jobs in this place in fact i don't know how you will do it but there's somebody you are a student while you are finishing your exam you will go you are going to get a job opportunity yes listen i know that this just help them help them under the anointing i know that god will not give you something that will distract you but if god is giving you it's because it is needed The hand of God will come on a lady fair in complexion. There's, I see a separation, a very strong deliverance. Bring her for me. I want to pray for her. I just saw a lady fair. Bring her. There is a separation that God wants to do. He's bringing an end. I declare over your life that the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more every yoke that you came here with tonight it is broken forever it is broken forever in the name of jesus christ i speak over your life and i declare that henceforth you will soar on the wings of eagles you will soar on the wings of eagles the glory of others will be your starting point Can I pray for favor again upon your life? I place a seal on your forehead. And I call that seal divine acceptance. From this night, wherever you go, you will be accepted. You will be accepted for good. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where you have been rejected, go back and be accepted. There is a young lady you were rejected somewhere. They gave you a reject um, information. I don't know what it is, but you were rejected. God said, I should tell you that within a space of days and weeks, they will call you back and apologize to you. And give you a befitting position. I'm saying it again. They will call you back, apologize to you, and give you a befitting position. I'm telling you what I'm saying. You will come here and testify. Is that the lady? Father, I stretch my right hand. From today, captivity comes to an end in this family. I bring them into a season of gladness. I curse that devil. Be quiet. Come out of her now. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Out now in the name of Jesus. Yes, just hold us. Just keep her there so she doesn't move. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Because of time, let me just speak over your life finally. And then I'll take an altar call. I declare that every cycle of the enemy that has been placed on your life from today it is rolled away never to return i speak to your family in the name of jesus may god lift men may god who is the helper of men lift men and people from your family in the name of jesus christ every long-standing prayer is answered this night i speak preservation over your life from now to the end of the year I curse every blood sucking demon out of your family I declare that you are the head and not the tail you are the first and not the last I pray that in this season everyone that God has designed to help you wherever they are by the power of the Holy Ghost I force them into your life I force them into your space now and I declare that they will not rest until they help you. 
In fact, let phone calls begin to come from this night. May your helpers arise for your, for, on your behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will testify, you. You will testify. You are more than a conqueror. And it is well with you. Father, anyone that is sick. Is there anybody with a bone condition? Anyone that is sick. You can put your hands down. Anybody with a bone condition. I just want to pray generally. Bone condition. But if you have a bone condition, please raise your hand. I want to pray generally for sicknesses because we are out of time. Bone condition. Bone condition. Just lift your hand where you are. Put your hand lifted. Lord, I speak to the bones right now. Like the bones of Ezekiel. Let broken bones be mended. Right now. Every dislocation be corrected. The Lord heals you and make you whole. I pray for everyone that is sick under the sound of my voice. I declare you healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Terminal diseases are healed now. Blood diseases are healed now. Viral infections are healed now. Genotypes are changed from SS to AA now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any kind of sickness, the Bible says, who heals all your diseases. I declare you healed now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the Lord? Please, as you're standing, let's just give an opportunity for an altar call. Everybody, no movement anywhere. Usher's protocol, no movement, please. All standing. If you are here, and you truly want to receive Jesus into your life or you want to be restored in fellowship to him again no movement I said please I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation God wants you saved in Christ Jesus you are here you say apostle even if it's just 30 seconds I'm ready to say yes to him I want you to make your way to the front right now quickly we don't have time so we can pray for you quickly if you want to receive Jesus into your heart you want to be born again or you want to be reconciled to God again please celebrate God for them they are coming quickly 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 God bless you keep clapping for them they are coming are you excited that souls are saved keep coming Jesus is calling you Jesus is calling you he died for your sins keep clapping they are coming Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards them. Those of you outside, please put your right hand lifted. Take your right hand up. Repeat this prayer after me. Lift your right hand and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died and rose again. That I will be saved. I receive you into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and personal savior thank you for saving me in jesus name we pray now put your right hand on your chest father i pray for these ones in the name of jesus i declare that their sins are forgiven let the life of the spirit of god dwell in them the power of god breaks every addiction in their life breaks every yoke of the enemy in their life i speak against foundational curses I declare that it is broken. I speak against the attack of witchcraft. I declare that it is broken forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will serve you forever. In Jesus name we pray.